Well, weather remains pretty quiet for much of the U.S. and also into the tropical Atlantic, so we're talking about La Nina. We are in a La Nina watch, and it looks likely by fall. So still expecting quiet weather, at least over the next few days here in the tropical Atlantic. Nothing in particular that the National Hurricane Center is watching, so that's some good news. Uh, but we're still early in the season. Uh, August and September is the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. And severe weather is kind of quiet, too. We're heading into that late summer, generally quieter phase, though uh, North Carolina, slight risk for some severe storms today. But otherwise, we're just looking at some pockets of general risk as the humidity starts to turn back around uh, a cool high pressure that's been kind of parked in the central U.S. here for the last couple of days, but not uh, any imminent major outbreaks, at least in the next couple of days. But we are in La Nina watch. You've probably heard a little bit about this. We are uh, switching from what was a strong El Nino last year and over the winter to now potentially a moderate to strong La Nina by fall. We already have La Nina conditions but we'll break down here uh, what it takes to be officially La Nina. You need three months in a row of that three month average being at at least a half a degree uh, cooler than normal. So what happens in a La Nina phase, this is what we're starting to see is those trade winds, which move from east to west around the equator, start to strengthen again. And that pushes the warmer water west in the ocean and allows upwelling, bringing in that colder water from uh, the depths of the surface. So that's how you get the cool water to pool there uh, off the west coast of South America. And the waters warm up even more in the tropical western Pacific. And that pushes those stronger storms off to the west. Whereas in an El Nino, which is what we were in last year and over the winter, the, we the winds weaken, the waters will allow to warm up and build really through the tropical Pacific. And that shifts those thunderstorm patterns further east. So it all affects the global circulation pattern. So this is a sped up loop since January 1st, very warm waters. And then you can see it really change very quickly uh, this spring to now colder than normal waters that we've been seeing. And this is expected to continue uh, and even amplify over the next several months into the upcoming winter. So above normal water temperatures, here we were about a year ago, uh, July, August, and then all of a sudden that shift in February uh, to colder than normal water temperatures. And once we get three consecutive three month average periods of that half a degree or cooler, it's officially La Nina. Uh, and all the models agree on keeping it below normal here. And in fact, uh, some of the models have us in a strong La Nina phase. So pretty remarkable to go from a strong El Nino to a strong La Nina in a very short period of time, literally the matter of months. So uh, the official forecast here, probability wise from NOAA, uh, calls for, by the time we head into the fall, a likelihood of La Nina conditions here. This is August, September, October, uh, and then through the winter. So this is a reminder of typical La Nina setup or conditions. Typically, eastern Alaska, western Canada, into portions of the plains and upper Midwest, below normal temperatures, dry conditions in the south, and wet, stormy conditions, milder conditions in the northeast. Most of us see those opposite patterns from what we did in an El Nino year. So this is looking at uh, several different La Nina winters and the temperature patterns. And the majority of them for places like the upper Midwest, Northern Plains into Western Canada and Alaska are below normal. But we did have a triple dip La Nina. And for example, Minnesota only had one of those three winters end up being below normal. So those are just general rules of thumb, but not always set in stone. 